Johnny Nolan, you're from the Career Service of the Department for Employment and Learning. Mm, that's right. Your task, your whole raison d'etre, is giving people hope, I suppose. Yes, I mean, our, our, our role is, is, is primarily being client-centered. It's about helping people to move forward in their lives in terms of their career aspirations, in terms of training, in terms of education, and in terms of employment. Um, it's about facilitating people. It's about sitting and listening to people in terms of where they want to go, and it's supporting them in getting there. How, how old are your clients? Is there, a, is there an age profile? Yeah. Well, it's an all-age service. So you can be somebody who is in a job and wants to upskill and wants some information about how to upskill in terms of qualifications. You could be somebody maybe who's been at home for the last you know, four or five years looking after children and so on, you want to come back into learning and back into education, back into training. You could be a young person who's in one of the local schools, either doing GCSEs or A-levels or vocational qualifications, and you're coming towards a milestone where you have to make choices about your next step. So it's right across the spectrum in terms of the type of people we would see. We could see people maybe who have been unemployed for either a short or long term, and again, it's about listening to where they want to go, what they want to do, and facilitating and supporting them in the process. Do you find that people, because of long-term or short, medium-term unemployment, that they can outgrow the desire or indeed the capability to work? I think that's a very personal thing. And the bedrock to, to a person helping themselves is motivation. Uh, and, uh, and their own level of motivation and their own desire to do things for themselves. The career service, we have 100 professionally qualified careers advisors and their ethos is about being client-centered. Mm. So if we have somebody who is in a situation where maybe they maybe lack self-esteem or maybe their confidence is not what it used to be or maybe their, their, their skills base is maybe um, not in keeping with the current trends in the labor market mm. and so on, um, our role would be to support and help that person to identify what their strengths are, to, to identify what their skills are, to, to, you know, to identify what their aims are for yeah. themselves. And I suppose the fact that they come to you yeah. is an indication immediately of yeah. motivation. Of motivation, yeah. And that's, and that's half the battle. If you have somebody coming to us and they're keen to progress and move on in their lives you know, through careers or through education and training, that's half the battle. You know, and that is a great start in terms of helping them to move on. Is there a swathe of, of, of bad publicity out there, if you like? The press, it's always depressing. If you think about the economy, always depressing. It, this is something that c can batter people down who are unfortunate enough not to have work. I mean, there may be, there may be that, but we can't control what's in the media. At the end of the day, what we can control and what we... we what can we you overcome? Can you be the positive to that negative? Well, that, that, that's what we try to do. I mean, as I said, it's very much client-centeredness, mm. listening to the client in terms of what they want, you know, looking at their strengths in terms of what they have to offer, and then finding out where they want to go. Mm. And then, through the careers advice, it's about signposting them towards the relevant options that suit yeah. them and their circumstances. Is, is so it's not a one-fit mm. approach to everybody. It's very <coughs> much client-centered. Johnny, is, it, I, is there a, an appetite there amongst employers to give people a second chance, realizing that in giving a second chance, there's been a failed first chance. They're out of work the first time didn't work. Is, is there a bias? Have you to work hard at getting employers to take an interest? Well, uh, well, at the moment, there's a range, the government obviously have a range of programs in place to support people to get back into the labour market as quickly as possible. Now, the employment service, who again operate in the in the jobs and benefit be benefit office in Bridge Street, they would have um, personal advisors, and they are there then to work to work with uh, job seekers who are maybe just being made redundant or who are short to, to medium uh, in terms of um, unemployment. Mm. And there are specific programs there to help people to get back Let and get the skills, yeah. to help them as a, as a stepping stone to get back into the labour market. Yeah. You know. And that's the, that's the kind of the, the snakes and ladders thing. You're at the bottom of the ladder. You're part of the ladder, part of the system. You're the link. Yeah. And you talk to them, you identify what they want to do, and you pass them on to the next level 
of your people who will interface them with industry and with, is that the way it yeah. works? Well, we, we would work hand in glove with, with our colleagues in the employment service. Yeah. So they may refer people down to us maybe who are not, who may not be immediately job ready and I, um, <coughs> or maybe looking for information around particular types of training, whether it's um, apprenticeships, whether it's access courses, whether it's going back into higher education, um, whether it's doing voluntary work. I mean, they will try and post people down to us who need that information, you know, in relation to getting back in, uh, moving their situation on, and obviously then we will try and post You those see, people. voluntary can be absolutely wonderful as a thought, because voluntary is very, is very often, uh, it's gi in giving that you receive. And if you are interfacing there with the voluntary sector and doing things, even though you're not being paid for it initially, people can twig very quickly to your skills and yeah. say, I like the cut of that guy's jib or I like that girl's yeah. attitude. That's right. And that's suddenly right. You're, you're, you're subsumed into the business and you're, you're then offered a post. Yeah. Does it I mean, work that way? Well, voluntary work is a, is a, is a fantastic way to, 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 to take that first step again. You know? mm. And as you said, in, in, in terms of voluntary work, there will be a number of organizations in, 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 in your, I think Volunteer Now was one particular organization, and they will help you, t they will try and match you to a particular uh, environment, you know, that you may have an interest in. It could be working with animals, it could be working in an office, it could be working in an outdoor <coughs> pursuit, you know. But again, it's a great way to develop your skills. It's a, it's a, it's a great way to get back out mm. in, into a routine. It's a great way to get, uh, you know, an insight into that particular type of work and that particular type of environment and that would add to your CV and that would mm. increase your employability in the long run. Yeah, Does, do, do you find there's such a thing as beaten dockets? People who are gone, they've been so long away from it, they're so out of touch with the technology, their brain isn't what it used to be, they're 70 years of age, they still need to do a wee bit of work, want to do a wee bit of work and really you've got to let them down gently and point them into some kind of field of pasture where they can... No, we, no, I know we, we would never, I mean our ethos is, as I said earlier on, it's very much client-centered. It's whatever the person's bringing to the table, mm. doesn't matter how young, doesn't matter how old, it doesn't matter how long they've been out of the labour market, you know. At the end of the day, it's about us listening to what they want to do in terms of their future progression and supporting and facilitating them to try and, to try and achieve that. I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you an example. I mean, for example, when I left school back in the 80s, I, I, I worked in a meat factory, mm. okay? Mm. Now, the meat factory, it was very menial work, you know. There was lots of, you know, cleaning things out and, and uh, cleaning conveyor belts and doing the washout. It was very mundane, and I, I mean, I said to myself, I want to better myself. I want to, I want to, there's no way I want to do this for the rest of my life. So I went back into education, I did a HND, and I did a degree, and then I did a postgrad, and this is where I am today, mm. you know. Mm. So sometimes... You know, sometimes you have to take a step backwards to go forwards. Yes. You know, and, um, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you come to the career service, we will try and help you and try and post you as best as possible. We will try and unpick your situation because everybody's unique and everybody will have their own individual hurdles or barriers that they have to overcome in order to move forward. And we will try and support you in that. Mm -hmm. You see, these are very positive and optimistic signals coming from the brew. That's what we always knew it at in Yuri over in Bridge Street. And I remember it in the days when uh, the, there were yellowed, smoke yellowed walls and people were in queues uh, going up to a box and standing there for hours on end and eventually be seen and told, yes, we'll help or no, we won't. There's a whole change in outlook and that's relatively new, certainly uh, in the last five years it has yeah. changed. Do you, um, is my time scale right or is it longer? Uh, I mean, at the moment, it's a very, very, very professional setup. I mean, the Jobs and Benefits Office in Uri, it's it's open plan, there's booths, uh, it's clean, it's air conditioned, there's TV, you know, where people can sit in the reception area while they're waiting to, to be seen by either the career service or the employment service. So it's very modern, very up to date, you know, the, 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 the hark back to, to what it was in the 70s and so on, it's the total reverse of what, mm. of what that, that was. Um, so, I mean, today it's modern, it's fresh, You've got professional staff, whether it's the career service and the employment service, supporting and helping people back y into the labour market. You look to be a sort of person, and you sound more importantly to be the sort of person who looks forward to getting out on Monday morning <laughs> and doing your job. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know. There's never a morning I wake up and think, oh God, I have to go to work. Uh, not, a, not at all. You know, I love going to work. You know, yeah. I've got a great team of careers advisors. They're there. I mean, I think last year the career service saw 16,000 adults 
here in this area? No, not in this area. No, overall. Overall, yes, 16,000. Yes, yes, yes. yeah. Overall, there was 51,000 contacts we had with the general pu mm. public. Uh, and there was 16,000 contacts with adults. And again, that's going back to sitting down, talking, you know, you're identifying your current situation, mm. taking stock of where you are, okay? Identifying where you want to go and helping the person to move forward. And we've, mm. as I said, 16,000 uh, adults have had a one-to-one -one careers mm. interview with a careers advisor. Is and there, that's been very mm, positive. Yeah, know? is there a, 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 it's difficult, I'm sure, to pick one out of the air, but I mean, is there a, uh, an example of which you're particularly pleased in our area during the last year, without in breaching confidentiality, but something, I'm glad that happened, that worked out beautifully. Yeah. Is there such a thing? Yeah, well, I'll give you an example. Last year now, um, as I said to you, it's an all-age service, so we could have six formers come to see us, we could have year 12s, we could have adults, but uh, I remember last year at, at UCAS, um, when the A-level A results came out, uh, UCAS being the University uh, Application system. system. Yeah, yep. yeah. And we had a, a local girl from Newry. She applied to be a social worker in England, okay? Mm -hmm. But she'd also applied for a course here in Queens. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there was a bit of negotiation and a bit of toing and froing uh, in order for her to be able to take up the place in London. Mm -hmm. And that was dealt with by one of my careers advisors. And the uh, the young girl and her mother came into the office and they gave a card and a box of chocolates in appreciation of, of, the, of the support that the careers advisor had given to the young girl in mm. terms of getting a place. Yeah. I mean, she had the grades and all that. It was more... Oh, yeah. The, the, Just the, the fine-tuning the, of it. Fine sure tuning it, of it yeah. Happen, and, yeah. And, I mean, and there's other, there's other examples where, for example, we, we, do, we support the job club. There's a job club in Uri, uh, and it's starting on the 19th of November. It, it, it takes place in the Neary Library, and we we support the job club. We go along, the careers advisors would go along, and again, it's about helping people with their CVs. It's about helping people with their employability, mm. uh, and we get a lot of positive feedback from Excellent. the, the yeah. job club in terms of uh, successful outcomes mm. for clients that have been in the job club. You'll yeah. be you'll be at the Canal Court on Wednesday tomorrow. It, yeah, it's a, I mean it's a big big day for for Neary on Wednesday. I mean. They're expecting somewhere between 1,500 and 2,000 people to attend the Canal Court. My God. It starts at 10 o'clock, it goes on till, till 5. There's 39 employers. There's, from what I hear and what I've been told, there's 440 vacancies. Um, for example, let me see, I think Norbrook have 100 vacancies. Um, MJM have vacancies. Force Derivatives have vacancies. Um, Golf Jug have mm -hmm. 20, 25 mm -hmm. vacancies. Mm -hmm. So there's a range of employers out mm -hmm. there who are looking for, uh, you know, people with the skills and the qualifications. So my advice would be whether you're, you're if you're a job seeker uh, of all ages and so on, it's free. Go along to the Canal Court on Wednesday, and uh, there are also some workshops. Some of the employers, for example, Tesco's are doing a workshop on what they look for in, uh, from an employee. Mm -hmm. Forced Derivatives, I think, are doing a workshop. Uh, the Career Service is doing a workshop in term on CVs mm -hmm. and so on. So th there's employers and, this, and the seminars and there's workshops taking place on Wednesday. It's a very, um, you know, I'd recommend people listening out there, your son, your daughter mm -hmm. at home, go be along. There. Yeah, be there, yeah. Johnny, thank you for coming in. Thanks very much. Hey. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thanks man. Sir. You're a good man. <laughs> Thanks very Take much. Take care. <laughs>